Welcome, trikers, bikers, cagers, and dreamers. You have to have a dream. I'm on the Foothills Parkway, which I've been on before and videoed the passage across the 18 miles. But I'm doing something different. I'm turning left here on Flats Road, which I've driven in the car, but never on a bike. It's a nice, interesting, rolling country road with some houses and uh, people that really are kind of out there. I mean, really out there. I mean, this is kind of far from everything. Groceries, medical care, whatever. But uh, it's a beautiful place, and if your location is good, you're going to have a good view of the Smokies right out your back window. So, what is this road going to be like? I'm not sure. But as you can see, there are some really nice houses along here. Sometimes I wonder if these are year-round residences or places that people just come to get away from it all. Hmm. Right turn here. I thought, uh, I'm not absolutely sure that this is still Flats Road, but uh, whatever it is, it's going to be a great adventure and I'm certainly looking forward to it. Ride along with me. Enjoy. As you can see, we're beginning to get a little bit of foliage here. Uh, not quite uh, full-blown springtime, but the, uh, the uh, trees, are, the flowering trees that is, are starting to uh, do their thing with the dogwoods and the red buds and the uh, uh, Bradford pears, uh, the smelly. Oh, look at that! How would you like to have a view like that out your back window? Ho oh, ho! That's a prime piece of property right there, I think. Would love to live there, but uh, kind of away from it all. I, I don't know whether that's such a good idea to, to be so far removed from everything. Look at there. Oh, look at that. Whoa. Terrific. A nice winding stretch of road here. Not a lot of traffic. I'm surprised I'm seeing any at all. But uh, I, I think this is a great getaway road right here. I was telling one of my uh, riding friends, actually he's uh, kind of a fellow moto vlogger, uh, about my experience uh, getting my motorcycle operator's license, the endorsement on my regular operator's license. And it was when I had my Yamaha 1970 DS6B, a nice little street bike, my introduction to owning my own motorcycle. Great little bike, a lot of fun, but uh, when I first had it delivered, I had not been licensed yet, so I kind of practiced starting it and riding it around the yard, getting ready for the day when I could actually, woohoo, yeehaw, actually ride it on the road. So I had a, uh, an associate where I worked that I knew rode motorcycles. He had a Honda CB160, which is a it was a kind of a well-worn little bike. I think he had, had a lot of fun with it. And, uh, of course, that takes its toll. But anyway, I, he agreed to come out and ride with me so I could kind of practice. And he also agreed to come along with me on the day I was going to take my road test because you have to have yourself, uh, your bike, of course, and uh, a driver for the brownie. That's what we called the... Oh, man! Holy switchbacks, Batman! Look at this! Woo! That's a pretty, pretty sharp turn. How much of this are we gonna have? Well, anyway, so John uh, decided he would come along with me and uh, accompany me and let the uh, inspector uh, ride in his car. Well, he showed up in kind of a beat-up old uh, Volkswagen Beetle. And uh, I was afraid he was going to be disqualified because I think the thing was maybe not quite up to inspection standard. So was this going to be the shortest motorcycle test ever? I don't know. Ooh, another little whoop-de-doo here. Look at that. This is a fun road. I'm not sure we're really on Flats Road here. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure we're not because none of this is familiar. So uh, the guy did a quick... Uh, kind of a cursory inspection of the, of the beetle, and uh, I, I guess it was, he kind of shook his head, and I guess he thought, well, I guess this is going to have to do. So off we went, 
and uh, I did my compulsory two, tur two circles, that is, to the left, two circles to the right, and a figure eight, and he was okay with that. Whoa, another nice sharp bend. And then he said, well, let's, let's drive around the block. And the uh, 1970s didn't have signal lights. I think they weren't required until 1971. So I had to do the hand signals, and I was very deliberate about doing that. And uh, he seemed to be satisfied with what I was doing. It was basically just four corners of a block. And he said, at the end, thank you, I'll, you'll be notified of your result. And uh, I don't know, a week or 10 days later, I got my paperwork and I was able to go down and get my endorsement. And uh, the rest is history, as they say. And I rode that little bike for uh, a year, put about 4,000 miles on it, mostly on country roads. And one trip that I took with another friend who had a Honda CB350 uh, to uh, an event in, uh, I think it was like New Berlin, New York. And uh, we um, went there and we didn't see any sign of any bikes or any activity or anything like that. So we stopped at a gas station to top off and I asked the guy, you know, hey, where's this uh, uh, event, the motorcycle uh, dirt race? And he kind of shook his head, he didn't know. And then this guy shows up on a Harley and uh, he, he was uh, having some difficulty with a leaky tire. And I asked him, he didn't seem to know much about it either. So, uh, <laughs> as it turned out, uh, we never did get to see the event, but we did have a great ride. Probably put about, uh, I don't know, three, four hundred miles on the bikes. Good experience all around. We had good weather, and uh, hey, that makes for a good ride. Good time was had by all, as they say. But uh, I had that CB, or yeah, that uh, DS6B, that is. Uh, motorcycle here, as I said, and I traded it for my next motorcycle, which was for me kind of like a dream come true. It was a Bimmer, an R60-5, and it was a great bike. Uh, I rode it uh, back and forth between New York and Connecticut, and I rode it from New York down to Alabama, and I rode it out to the Midwest, and super running bike. Great gas mileage. I think sometimes on a straight even stretch I could get up to maybe 60 miles per gallon. And when it hit uh, its proper cruising speed, which is probably around 65 or 70, the tack was dancing right at about 4,500 RPM. And the exhaust note was absolutely beautiful. Man, I loved that machine. And I went and sold it because I was getting married. And I remember the kid I sold it to was, thought it was the most beautiful bike he ever saw and blah, blah, blah. And the day he came up with the certified check, uh, I was heartbroken as I saw it ride off into the, well, it wasn't really the sunset, but it was uh, the last I ever saw of it. And, uh, well, looks like we're on a straighter stretch here now. Uh, the fun's over. Well, the fun's not really over because uh, I'm still having a great time. The uh, kid's father called me back uh, uh, maybe a month or two later saying that he thought the bike just wasn't running right. And uh, he owned an R75 and he expected, I guess, that the R60 was going to perform you know, virtually the same except to have a little more power. Well, it turns out that the R60 uh, which produced, uh, I think it was something like 46 horsepower, was really peaky, I mean, way peaky. It really didn't have much of anything below 4,000 RPM. And the red line was only like, I don't know, either 64 or 6,600 RPM. So it was a pretty narrow power band. And uh, uh, I told that uh, to him, and he, I wasn't sure he was really convinced. So I pulled out the magazine that I still had, which was the test. Uh, comparing an R60 to an R75, essentially chapter and verse what I had told him. And I'm not sure even then he was still impressed. I think he was just trying to run it uh, too low in the RPM range for the conditions he was riding in, and he was obviously not getting the kind of performance that an R75 would. Well, anyway, I never heard from him again. 
which I was happy about. I certainly could have photocopied uh, the article in the magazine, and that would have been proof positive, in my opinion. But the kid was kind of a, a little bit nuts, I think. He had had a CB750 Honda, you know, four cylinders, four carbs, and all that. And somehow he had messed up the tuning. I mean, I don't think he was really much of a mechanic. I mean, I don't think I'm a great shade tree mechanic either, but I think I have at least some skill. And uh, apparently he had gotten the thing so messed up that he finally got so pissed off, he just took the tank and threw it. Um, definitely not something a level-headed person would do, but, uh, well, hey, who's level-headed in this day and age? Or that one either, for that matter. This is really a pleasant road. I'm very happy to be on it, and I think I would take this ride again. But I really want to go on Flats Road also, which is a, quite a different experience. And it goes uh, between the uh, Foothills Parkway and Route 129, which is the gateway to the dragon. Yes, the dragon. The infamous, wonderful dragon. 318 curves and 11 miles. And uh, most of you, I think, have probably heard of it. Some of you perhaps have even ridden it. Great fun. I did it uh, last year with Br'er Dan, uh, and I did not have the camera with me, which was a mistake I'm still kicking myself about. But this upcoming riding season, which we're already kind of on the fringes of, I definitely will do that. Now, I'm, I don't have YouTube Red, which apparently, among other things, gives you more than 15 minutes of recording time. And I'm not sure that's really all that wonderful anyway, because if I can keep somebody watching one of my videos for more than 15 minutes, I think it's a friggin' miracle. But anyway, be that as it may. Uh, oh, look at that pretty blue sky. The sun is shining. It's about 60 degrees. It's just an absolutely wonderful day for a ride. Now, I maybe have alluded to why I'm riding a Can-Am, but not a two-wheeler anymore. But uh, my issue has been uh, peripheral neuropathy. I have good strength in my legs, good endurance. I walk three miles at Nordic track. I do water exercise. But uh, somehow the signals don't quite get sent properly to my brain. It's like my legs are a little bit numb all the time. And that doesn't lend itself to being very safe riding a two-wheeler. So consequently, it's either out of the wind or in the wind on a trike. And man, as those of you who ride know, in the wind is definitely the best. I look forward to an opportunity to ride with you more. I would love to hear from you. Let me know what you ride. Let me know what your favorite road is. This is a wonderful hobby, and I'm glad you're here to enjoy it with me. I'm about to sign off, so i got to say... Keep the rubber side down, keep the shiny side up, and deuces, as Blockhead would say.